Welcome to a SkyMind screencast tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to cover Keras model import. This is a new feature in DL4J introduced uh, in November of 2016. And what it allows you to do is to save a model that you perhaps worked with uh, or trained in Keras in the Python library for deep learning and you want to export that model and import it into DL4J. So what we're going to do in this example is export a Keras sequential classifier model, uh, import it into DL4J, and then verify that it works. If you have questions on importing models or in any Deep Learning for J question, you can chat with us on Gitter. There are more examples available in our examples repo and there is a quick start guide to help you get your environment set up for exploring deep learning for Java. Thank you. Keras model import to DL4J. So perhaps uh, you've been using Python and Keras uh, to build your neural nets and you would like to import those into DL4J. In October of 2016 we've added that functionality Here's a demonstration. The data set I'm working with is the iris data set. So I'm going to build a simple classifier that takes this iris data set, what is it, sepal length, petal length, uh, petal width, sepal width, and then the name of the iris. So we're going to take the first four parameters and use it to make a classification of one of the three possible labels. The example here in Python is iris.py. So I use Keras, I set a random seed, I load the data set as a data frame. The last parameter is going to be the label, so Y is going to be the label. X is going to be the data set, it's going to be the first uh, four parameters. Encode everything as integers. Uh, convert the integers to uh, hot encoding a numerical representation, build a sequential model, add some layers to the sequential model, compile the model, run model fit over our data set, compare it with our labels, run it for 200 epochs with a batch size of 5. Also note that I print X and Y. You wouldn't want to do this in production this is only 150 uh, lines, so what, 300 lines there? And I did that just so I could verify and also print the hot encoding. This is the code here that saves the model. So I'm going to save the weights uh, in a file called iris model save. I'm going to convert the model definition to JSON, and I'm going to write that JSON file. So when I run this code, it'll print the iris data set to the screen, it'll print my labels to the screen, uh, it will run model fit against the model, and it'll output the updates as that progresses. It'll create a file of the output weights and a file of the, the network configuration. So there's the data set. Here are the labels. Here are the labels converted to one hot encoding. And then there is my model as it trains. A naive model would get 33% right. There's only three choices. And then as it trains, it gets better. And better, and better, and better, till we're at about 90 9% accuracy. When the model is done, it will have generated this JSON file. Which has the neural net configuration. And it will also have created this H5 file. Which will have the weights. So given the two of those, I can load my Keras model into DL4J. 
Now that we've saved our model in Keras, let's import the model into DL4J. So I'm going to create a new class and let's call it import Keras config. I'm going to need a logger. So what will we need here in our class? In DL4J, a neural net configuration is called a multi-layer network. And I'm going to call it model. So the class that we want to import our model is in uh, org deep learning for J, neural nets, model import, uh, Keras model and we want import sequential model and what do we pass to import sequential model uh, we pass it the uh, path to our JSON and we pass it the path to our model save and the JSON is here and the H5 file is here. So that will import our sequential model. Loading the model is one thing. Verifying that it works as expected in DL4J is another. We have the IRIS dataset available to us in DL4J in the examples. It's formatted a little differently. We have the sepal length, petal length, petal width, sepal width variables available, uh, but we've already classified the labels as an integer. So the code needed to load that data set and evaluate will look like this. I'm going to set some parameters. Often when you're reading a data file, there is a header. There isn't one here, so I'm going to set number lines to skip. I need to set the delimiter. It was comma delimited data. Create a record reader. And we're going to use CSV record reader. And we pass it to num lines to skip. The delimiter. Then we initialize the record reader. And we need to pass it the file that we're reading. And our file was iris.txt. So those two lines, uh, we create a record reader. And then we initialize that record reader uh, by reading the file iris.txt uh, from our class path. For our record reader, we need to specify the label index so it knows what field is the labels. And it was the fifth field. There are three potential classes. And the record reader takes a batch size. And in this case, we're going to do all int uh, batch size because we can fit all that in memory. Now that we've specified how we want the data to be read, it's time to build a data set iterator, which will return a data set that we can pass through to our neural network. And we're going to use a record reader data set iterator. And we pass it our record reader that we built previously. Specify our batch size. our label index and our number of classes.
So that line specifies we'll be reading from our record reader, returning a data set. We'll be reading 150 lines. Label index is the fifth. The number of possible classes is three. Then let's build a data set by reading 150 lines. And we get that by calling next on our iterator. And now that we have all those 150 lines in memory, let's shuffle them. At this point, we have our model. We have our record reader to read the data and prep it for running through our model. So what's next? We need to evaluate the model, particularly when importing from Keras. There's a chance, right, that our data is not in the appropriate shape here, that we're not reading it in the same way that we're reading it. If it was image data, perhaps we're not getting the RGB levels in the same order. So it's important um, to make sure that the data is consistent and to run a test. Perhaps we're normalizing the data in one and we're not normalizing it in the other. So we want to make sure that we evaluate our model. So let's create a new evaluation. So we're going to generate our output by passing our data through to the model. And then we're going to evaluate that against the labels from when we read the data. And then let's log this. And that's it. So there's our code. It reads our model that we had saved from Keras. Then it reads some data local, builds a data set, passes that data set through to our model, and evaluates its output. Let's run the code and see if our Keras model import was successful. We had one little typo there. So check that out. So there's the output of our evaluation. So label zero was classified by the model as zero. So it looks like we got at least that part right. Label one was classified most frequently as one. There was an error or two here with uh, label one, misclassification. Uh, label two was classified as label one as well. So a misclassification there between 2 and 1. But label 2, for the most part, was classified as 2. So good scores for 0, 1, and 2, and 3 misses out of 150 examples. So an accuracy of 98%, which is about what we saw when we ran it in Keras. So excellent. That's how we import a Keras model. If you have any questions or if you have any challenges importing your Keras model, um, contact us on the Gitter channel.